Hello and welcome to another video of Learn SQL. And in today's video, we are going to learn something uh, which is you know very common in SQL. We already learned procedure and function, but we are going to learn anonymous block. Now, the anonymous block can do a very similar job what you could have done in your procedure, but it doesn't have a name. So basically, an anonymous block in the SQL server is a group of T SQL statement that are enclosed within begin and end block and executed as a single black block batch the block does not have a name or a parameter it is not stored as the standalone object in the database so it's not going to be stored we wanted to do a set of statement we wanted to test sometime what happens how to create a procedure and i do not sure where, where, what's happening what would happen to those steps so i can go ahead and do that anonymous block and can test out my code now it's really helpful sometime to you know do a set of operations together and we can actually go ahead and try that out so how do we write down this very simple and it is not that it is there in the SQL servers the same thing is available in Oracle the same thing is available in Postgres and similar things are available in MySQL also and numbers block we simply write down begin and end inside that we can write down our own code so I have already started my SQL server and I also started SQL server management studio and in the SQL server management studio I have already logged in using my credentials and it is open and you can see I have also written some code I was testing it for this class and we can actually go ahead and look at you know now the databases and in the databases we can actually go ahead and open learn sql right click new query that's where we are going to write down so let's write in our very simple statement where we, we will say begin and we say select star from sales very simple statement semicolon i can give and i can say and and I run it it gives me the statement so now I can write down more complex statement by you know having let's say in this one but you now understand that it can execute now so the thing where we wanted to do we want to run down multiple set of statement and see the you know what impact it does so one of the thing which I can do can I write down two SQL queries here and can it can it take there so I write down select sales and select for start from item and let's see what does it do now So you can see it has executed two select statement. Now there should be some logical stuff which is happening in between just to showcase you and the SQL server is able to show the two results at a time. So that's why I've done it. But in other uh, databases, what would happen? One get executed, one result goes away and then the next one executed, next one might come in. So now let us see what something I wanted to do um, using these um, select statement. So what things I can do. So there is one thing which you can do is basically you can define the variables and can control the statement. So I can do that using say declare and in the declare I can say let's say my um, I have at the rate id and in the at the rate id I declare int and I can assign a value equals to now somewhere it may be colon equal to in some of the databases so just look at the syntax and now I can go ahead and let me re remove this one I just wanted to use this one way I can define where item underscore id equals to at the rate id okay and it is taking it and let me run it and you can see now results is three tri triple three rows and it is less than that and there is also a message reflected here which i can see and i can make it little bit bigger by using control and this one. okay so now you can see the statement is running now i also have it as one and because i have run one more statement so let me do one thing let me write it down for you because while practicing you should do it step by step now I can change it to or something else let's say 2 and let me run it and you can see this thing has come in 2348 and you can also see the same message coming here now what happens when it gives negative 1 minus 2 is, or minus 1 is something which does not exist and let me run this one and you will see there is no row return. Now there is no row return the message here. But can I write down my own statement? Yes, I can write down. So I can say, now first of all, I need to know that, you know, row count, what is my row count? So let me start printing the print. And let me copy this again because this is what you're going to do is you're going to try it out after everything. Next one. So let me first of all, make it as two only and let me write down a print statement. So it is print row. Now every database will have little bit different in the kind of variables they offer but it would you will have some kind of variable which gives it and I can check it out here I have written at the rate at the rate row count and 
it's in the SQL Server, it is at the rate, at the rate row count, but it could be a little bit different in some other databases like Oracle might give you something different, but it's going to give you the same thing. Now, if I want to see that message, actually, I have to go to the message tab and in the message tab, you can see 348 is the number written and this is written because of this one. And I can actually do here, let me try out this thing. The row count is. Okay, now the conversion uh, may give the error, so we can say cast. So these are a few, few things which we have to do in case we get errors. Okay. And now only plus button works. So there are differences in each databases. So in uh, SQL Server, we can in fact use the plus for concatenating this strings. In Oracle, we use actually pipe symbol. Uh, in Power BI, I typically use Power BI. So there we use M percent. So different tools. Now I can handle this also by writing down if statement. And first time we are writing in the conditional and conditions we can write down into the uh, procedure into functions. And here we are writing down in anonymous block. So we say if at the rate at the rate row count is greater than or equal to one, then you do print this else you print. No rows found and there are ways and means we can separate the messages which database is giving that is also available. Uh, we can also check that out in some later uh, um, videos. So now look at it, uh, see uh, we have the message and the row count here the cast where care is not working actually. So this one is giving zero and this is one thing we forgot to observe when we done it for first time. So now why it is giving zero, let's uh, check it out. So for that, because what is happening, we are using this at the rate row count twice. So instead of doing that now, I may want to declare it before, but I can declare it here also. Now, depending on the database where the declare is supported now declare and I can declare a new variable at the rate count and I can say that is equals to this one. Okay. And I can give the data type also, let's say int equals to this thing. Now here, instead of you, this one, I'm going to use this one. And then I'm going to say this one is where care. And now let me run this statement and see, does it work out? So now if I go here, I can see 348. So because at the rate, at the rate row count is immediately available after that. If you again use it, it is not uh, going to be made available. And sometimes we called it, you know, uh, the uh, implicit cursor which get created. And these are the uh, things which we can get the information from the implicit cursor, which is automatically getting created by database. We are not explicitly defining it. So this is what happening. So now you can see the numbers which is coming out and now you have your own message. Uh, no, uh, no row found is something which we need to test. So for that, we are going to get a minus two here. And once we give the minus two and run here, you will be able to see that this is, there is no row found, but we also get a message, no row found. So in this manner, you can go ahead and write down some complex kit, test it out using the um, anonymous uh, procedure or anonymous uh, code block. Uh, there are different names which we with which we call it. It doesn't have a name basically, but it allows us to run the set of statements. So very useful tool uh, to you know first create our small ETLs and test it, and then convert it into the procedure or the function depending on your need. So go ahead and try that out, and uh, do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular uh, series. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you. Keep watching, keep asking questions in comments, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notification for new videos. Thank you.